The Dodgers are off to a pretty good start to the season. Not perfect by any means, but you'd be a fool to not be at least satisfied by LA's first few weeks. The starting pitching has been excellent, the bullpen's been solid, Justin Turner is mashing, and Mookie Betts is doing Mookie Betts things. So off the top of your head, who do you think leads LA in baseball reference war? One of the two Cy Young winners? Or the two MVP winners? The reigning World Series MVP? No, it's actually this guy, who looks more like someone who plays in a neighborhood bowling league than a professional athlete. You probably know the general deal about Max Muncy. He came from nowhere in 2018, hits for a bunch of power, and draws a bunch of walks. You might not appreciate it as much as you should, though. Apart from the occasional moonshot, he's not exactly a glamorous player, and he wasn't great last season, so I'll forgive you if you may not recognize the stardom of Max Muncy, but that's what I'm here to do today. Coming through the minors in the A's system, Muncy wasn't exactly a hyped prospect. He was seen as a guy without a real position that had a good eye and a good contact bat, but was too slow and with too little power to be an everyday player. That projection hasn't really panned out, to say the least. After two extremely pedestrian seasons with Oakland, Muncy was released and signed to a minor league deal with the Dodgers, where he would play the entire 2017 season in the minors. Muncy wasn't happy with his results as an A, so he made a swing adjustment to try and revitalize his career. He bought into the launch angle revolution completely, choosing to forgo his contact and bat control, which was seen as his biggest asset at the time, for an all-in launch angle approach where he would look for one specific pitch, and when he got it, put it in the air with a bunch of backspin. While Muncy was seen as a light-hitting, poor field and utility guy, he'd always had a great eye, which made him a prime candidate for success with this new approach, even if he didn't have the most natural power. In 2018, after injuries decimated LA early in the season, the defending NL pennant winners had a shortage of infielders and a sub-500 record. Max Muncy was brought up from Oklahoma City for what most thought would be a temporary stopgap, but would end up being the biggest roster move in a season that included a trade for Manny Machado. He homered in his first Dodger start, but then stank for a couple weeks. A demotion seemed imminent until he hit a couple of homers in the midst of an ugly losing streak. On May 17th, the Dodgers sat at 16 and 26, and the season's prospects looked bleak. Then Max Muncy kicked off a hot streak that catapulted himself from a nobody into a household name, and the Dodgers back into contention. From May 19th until the All-Star break two months later, Muncy hit a league-leading 19 home runs, giving him a spot in that year's home run derby. He was third in the league with a 191 WRC+, and fifth in the league with 3.1 war. The Dodgers went from tied for last place in the NL West, 10 games below 500, to first place in the division, 10 games above 500, thanks in no small part to Muncy jump-starting the dead offense. The Dodgers finished that season tied with Colorado for first in the division and ended up going to the World Series, both of which could not have happened without Muncy's unexpected contributions. His 5.2 F war and 162 WRC plus on the whole season made him the best player on the Dodgers in 2018, a top 5 hitter in baseball and a top 20 overall player by war. He followed it up with an all-star appearance in 2019 and a very solid 134 WRC plus and 4.8 F war, showing his breakout year was no fluke. In the shortened 2020, Muncy was underwhelming, but it was off the back of a BABIP 65 points lower than his career average. His strikeout and walk rates were actually better than his 2019 season. So far in this season, Muncy has been the Dodgers' second best hitter behind Justin Turner, with an impressive 154 WRC plus and 457 on base percentage, helping guide LA to their solid April. There's a legitimate argument that Max Muncy has been the Dodgers' second best player since 2018, but he understandably gets overshadowed by flashier names like Bellinger, Seeger, and Kershaw. Why? Well, again, Muncy's greatest skill, even more so than his power, is his excellent eye at the plate. He's fifth in baseball and walk rate since 2018, and the names he's behind are some of the most prodigious hitters in the sport. His 139 WRC plus since 2018, higher than names like Cody Bellinger, Bryce Harper, and Pete Alonso, makes him the 14th best overall hitter in the league in that time frame, despite a pedestrian 250 batting average. Okay, you get it, right? He walks a lot. But having good play discipline is about more than just taking walks, it's about working counts and not swinging at bad pitches to set yourself up to do damage instead of just pining for a walk. Muncy strikes out a bit too much to call him a master of the strike zone like, say, prime Joey Votto, but Muncy is as good at taking pitches out of the zone as anyone else in baseball. Since 2018, out of almost 200 qualified hitters, Muncy is 8th lowest in O swing percentage which measures how often a player swings at balls outside the zone. He also had the 14th lowest F strike percentage, which measures how often the first pitch of his at-bats are strikes. 
You might argue that these numbers are inflated because Muncy just takes a lot of pitches, and you'd be partially right. His 38% overall swing rate is 6th lowest since 2018, but swing rate doesn't directly correlate to being a good hitter or even having a good walk rate. You'll notice that David Fletcher actually has a lower swing rate than Muncy, despite having a career walk rate less than half of Muncy's, which can be explained by Fletcher taking the most strikes without swinging in baseball, which Muncy also does often, but less often than players like Mike Trout and DJ LeMayhew, and far less often than you'd expect given his low total swing rate. There's evidence to suggest Muncy's eye is getting even better, even if maybe the raw power in his bat is declining. If we restrict our time frame to 2020 and 2021, then Muncy has tied for the lowest swing rate in the league, and the single lowest swing rate outside the zone, better than Mike Trout by a full percentage point. In the small sample of 2021 so far, Muncy's 14% O swing percentage is the best in the league, better than second place Juan Soto by more than two points. Personally, I think this makes Muncy the ideal leadoff hitter, and if Mookie Betts didn't have his weird quirk where he hits way better as a leadoff guy, there's no doubt Muncy would be hitting in that spot. As we speak right now, in his last 5 games, Max Muncy is 1 for his last 11, but has a 500 on base percentage because he's walked 12 times in the last 5 games. A few days ago into the Padres, he walked 5 times in the same game. We're really witnessing something that we haven't seen since prime Joey Votto. The point I'm trying to get at here is that Muncy's prodigious play discipline makes him one of the highest floor players in the game. I talk about high floor and high ceiling players a lot, so it's worth taking some time to explain. A high floor player is one whose skill set is less prone to randomness and slumps, so even if they're getting unlucky or are suddenly unable to hit the ball, which happens to most players from time to time, they find other ways to consistently find value. A high ceiling low floor player, on the other hand, is someone who when they're locked in is nearly unstoppable, but is also prone to bad slumps or has big holes in their game. A perfect example of this, at least on offense, is Javier Baez, who is only two years removed from a near MVP season, but his insanely high swing and strikeout rate and low walk rate makes him susceptible to lengthy offensive slumps. Were it not for his excellent defense, Baez would be a near worthless player right now. Play discipline doesn't slump nearly on the same level as most other skills, which you can see in 2020 when Muncy maintained his excellent walk rate despite his power and contact failing. It's nearly impossible for someone hitting 192 to be even an average hitter, but Muncy managed a 100 WRC plus while doing exactly that in 2020, due pretty much entirely to his excellent plate discipline, giving him a better on-base percentage than contact-oriented hitters like Whit Merrifield and Cattell Marte. This is despite the fact his 203 BABIP, or batting average on balls in play, which is generally regarded as one of the stats most prone to random variation, was the single lowest of any qualified hitter last year. We've only talked about Muncy's hitting so far, but he's actually a better rounded player than you probably think. He's mainly a first baseman, a position where he's an above average defender, but he also tacks on the ability to play a serviceable second and third base. He's probably below average at both, but even being able to play either spot without making a fool of himself differentiates him from 90% of first basemen, and lets him set up his teammates for success by giving them rest, getting other players in the lineup, and covering for injuries. On top of this, despite being maybe the most stout looking player in baseball, he's surprisingly athletic. He makes a bunch of impressive picks at first and has well above average range as a defender there. His stat cast sprint speed in 2020 was in the 63rd percentile which made him the 5th fastest first baseman in the league, and actually one of the faster players on the Dodgers. So to sum everything up, Muncy doesn't just take a lot of walks, he's one of the most patient players in the sport and only improving. He also plays solid defense and can move around the diamond to accommodate different lineups. This means that even when slumping, Muncy gets on base and finds value, making him a great role player that at his best puts up all-star caliber numbers. In many ways, Max Muncy embodies the direction analytically-minded teams like the Dodgers have been taking in recent years. He's a former contact-hitting role player who changed his swing and approach to become a surprise power-hitting star. He definitely doesn't hit for a particularly high average, but his on-base percentage is so great you don't even care. And his positional flexibility is an extremely important asset for any team looking to compete. When someone questions the effectiveness of advanced analytics, point to Max Muncy as an example of a star that wouldn't exist without them. Like, comment, subscribe, etc. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.